Hi everyone, I'm Ali Graymond. I'm an OCD recovery coach with more than 10 years of experience helping people recover from OCD. Prior to that, I had severe OCD myself that I fully recovered from and as do my clients. So if you wonder, can you fully recover from OCD? Absolutely, yes, you can. Today, I wanted to answer a question for those who are tracking rumination time, which you should because it is very effective in recovery, making the recovery um, go much, much faster. So what counts as rumination? So let's take two different aspects of this. What counts as rumination when it comes to real life stuff and what counts as rumination when it comes to OCD? When it comes to OCD, um, anything that relates in any way to your theme even if it's indirectly, what if I never recover? My future is going to be bad. I can't believe how much time I've wasted in the past. All this stuff, even indirect stuff, counts as rumination time. And I hear this very, very often. Um, and of course, things are that are directly related to your theme. So for example, if you have harm OCD, anything that relates to harm that you're ruminating about would count. Uh, if you have religious OCD, anything that relates to your fears that have to do with religion would count as rumination and so on and so forth. Um, now with real life, let's say it's not really OCD, but you're getting caught up on something and you're overthinking a situation. Next stop on the strain will be OCD. So you want to make sure that in addition to disregarding and reducing rumination for OCD every day, you're also not getting caught up in real life. With real life, um, I would treat it a little bit different where if there's a situation, I don't mean that like false memory real life OCD, right? Where people worry what if something happened and they feel like it's real life. I mean things that are factual, like starting a new job or or uh, moving, and you're ruminating a lot about it, if you don't have um, any action that you're going to take right now on a situation, choose not to ruminate. If there is an action that you can take on a real-life situation, then have a max amount of time that you're going to think about it per day. So for example, let's say you have something important coming up. How much ideally do you want to ruminate about it? Let's say you'll say 15 minutes a day. Okay, 15 minutes a day, that is, it is. And after that, you have reached your quota. You are now done. So you are choosing to no longer ruminate until tomorrow about this thing. And whenever you catch yourself doing so, you gently guide yourself back that, no, no, we, we're done thinking about it for the day. And then again, everything that directly has to do with OCD stuff is off limits, including rumination about recovery, including what if I uh, am not doing this correctly? And what if I don't recover because I'm not doing this correctly? First of all, that's not true. If you're doing this at all, you will recover. It'll just be slower versus a little faster and everybody makes mistakes in recovery there's no perfectionism in life there's no perfectionism in ocd and there's no perfectionism in ocd recovery we're just doing the best we can i find that um not to go off topic as i usually do but when i was going through my own uh recovery i didn't really have any other information on ocd um same way that you guys have now with the uh, different abbreviations for different types of OCD and uh, so much information, so many videos. And that's the reason I started to do videos, because when I started to do videos, there was literally uh, one black and white video on YouTube describing Puro. That was it. And I'm like, uh, in my naive mind, <laughs> this was over a decade ago, right? I was thinking, you know, if there's one other person that's going through what I'm going through, and I now know how to help them, I should put out what I know, and maybe that will help them. And that's kind of how it started. It was never meant to be what it is now. It was just, I just wanted to really share information. So, but because of how little there was out there about OCD, nobody told me I couldn't recover. Nobody said anything really. Nobody told me that I could recover either. People, there was no information. So um, I just did the best I could in the course of a day. And that's what I'm asking you to do. And any rumination, have you ever had a situation where rumination really helped? I don't mean like help to do a compulsion to get out of an OCD thought, but it really helped you in life. Not that often. But how much pain has rumination caused you over the years? A lot, right? So just 
disregard. Just try to, um, again, if it's real life, have a limit on it. If it's OCD, viewing it for what it is, which is a compulsion. And no, I'm choosing, I'm forcing myself to choose not to ruminate. And when you force yourself to choose not to ruminate, it's not going to feel good. You're going to feel unsettled. You're going to feel unsure. You're going to feel like you're doing the wrong thing. The thoughts will feel very real. And this is all part of the recovery process. You need to accept that this is OCD recovery. It's painful. It's not pretty, but it has to be done. Believe me, I've heard it all over the years. People trying various uh, techniques, centers. I mean, people tried impatient uh, with very little success. Um, people tried hypnotherapy, light therapy, uh, hypnosis, uh, um, uh, T, what's that, T, TMS uh, for the um, uh, brain stimulation. All of it has, I mean, it's very, it, some, most of it is actually not effective at all. Some of it is very mild. So you need to do recovery work. I wish I could tell you there is an easier way, but there really isn't. But look at it from this perspective. Even if you do, um, let's say, if you're in a situation where you're at 180, I say this all the time, but I really want you to understand this, that even if you're at 180 every three hours, 180 minutes every three hours, reducing by one minute each day, in 180 days, you will get there. And I bet you've been suffering more than 180 days. So it's not so much about I can't do it. It's about having focus, having accountability, seeing the goal that today it's 179 and tomorrow it will be 178. You know, and little by little getting there. I, I mean, I see this every day. My clients are, because my clients are sending me numbers. They're sending me screenshots of the app. They're sending me the zeros. It's just, you have to do this. And it's not actually, it's not, I mean, one minute is the bare minimum, but usually people move down by about 10 minutes. So that's why I say in other videos, 180 minutes is 18 days. With setbacks, because setbacks are, you know, no perfection, um, 25, 30 days. So in a month, you can get this done or at least reduce it to a drastic limit. And you have to understand that other people online, this is my method. I've created it. They're not using it because, frankly, they can't because it's copywritten. So they're doing their own thing with their one hour a day, maybe of homework, of writing out track, uh, not track sheets, what are they called? Uh, um, uh, where you write out a story, your scary story, and you, and you reread it ad nauseum. Um, the uh, scripting, that's the word. So they're doing that for an hour a day and then ruminating for the rest of the hour. So they, when they say, I can't, you can't recover this way. Yes, that's right. I absolutely agree. You can't recover this way because most of the time you're actually making yourself worse. So don't listen to anybody. Just do this. Stay on track. As they say, keep your head down and plow forward and you will plow through this. And I'm telling you another thing that post OCD recovery, your life will be better than before OCD because you will be able to employ this same technique. And this is what my other channel, Power Over Mind, is all about. We're going to be developing this a lot more. The Power Over Mind stuff, right, where you're also much more capable, like we were saying earlier in the video, reacting better to real life, where I mean, you can see how the world is nowadays, that you're able to deal with things a lot better. You don't dwell. You don't ruminate. You look right for the solution. Is the solution up to me? If yes, okay, let's figure it out. If it's not up to me, I'm not ruminating until it's my turn. Until it's my turn to do something, then I will think about my move. If it's not even my move, if it's, you know, the other uh, party's move or if it's, uh, the universe's move, right? Then I will wait until it's my move. And until it's that, I'm not ruminating. And taking it like this, it frees up that energy because when you have OCD and when you're dealing with this all the time, it's such an energy drain. I remember when I had severe PRO, the second you get a new thought, maybe let's say you push through some of the day and you started to feel a little bit better. 
And then the second you get a new thought, it's like a whoosh. You, the energy is gone. You feel like you need to go to bed. You need to sleep for a long time because you have no more energy to do anything. That's that's how OCD is because you're wasting so much energy on trying to fix it, trying to figure it out. So choosing, forcing yourself to not do this, for, forcing yourself to choose not to do this is really helpful across every aspect of your life. I hope you do this. I will leave the links to the app below for Android and for iOS. Uh, if you would like to do one-on-one -on -one recovery program with me, you can visit youhaveocd.com and sign up from there. Thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.